Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, uh, dear students. Uh, I hope you are all doing well and keeping safe in your quarantine places. This morning, our lesson is on basic trigonometry. We are teaching, learning, and applying. And the three areas we'll be considering today are misconceptions and barriers in teaching and learning of Pythagoras theorem. Secondly, we'll look at Pythagorean triples. And finally, we'll look at how we can solve uh, Pythagoras theorem problems using right-angled triangles. For a start, I, I need every one of you to name three plane figures and, number the, and give us the number of lines of symmetry each of them has. Three plane figures and give us the number of lines of symmetry each of them has. I want to set the ball rolling. I'll begin with mine, and you would have to do yours in your, in your book or your sheets, your worksheets. Now I have a square, and the line of symmetry is the line that divides the shape into two equal halves in such a way that one half lies exactly on the other half. And so for the square, the lines of symmetry are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, will be a rectangle, a, a rectangle. And how many lines of symmetry has a rectangle? Now for a rectangle, the two opposite sides are equal. And so the lines of symmetry in my case will be two. And they are a vertical line dividing that shape into two equal halves. And when you fold the rectangle on that line, you see that one half will fold exactly on the other half. And the second one, will be a horizontal that way. Um, for a quick demonstration, I have a little sheet of paper here serving as my rectangle. And so, to identify the lines of symmetry, I need to fold along that way. And see that after the fold, both sides are lying exactly on each other. And so that is one line of symmetry shown by my horizontal line. Then, for the same rectangle, if I fold along in a vertical way, I can have one side of the rectangle lying exactly on the other half. On the other half. And so that becomes another line of symmetry demonstrated on the board with my vertical line. So for my rectangle, I have two lines of symmetry. Now my last shape I will be naming will be a rhombus. Now for the rhombus, all four sides are equal. And so the lines of symmetry in that shape would also be two, one vertical, while horizontal, passing opposite sides of the vertices of the rhombus. And so these are my um, lines of symmetry for the three plane figures I have named. You name three plane figures too and give us the lines of symmetry each of them has. When you are done with that, uh, you need to tell us which of them has the highest number of lines of symmetry. So in my case, the one with the highest number of lines of symmetry is the square. And it has four lines of symmetry. Now my next question is, how many lines of symmetry has a circle? How many lines of symmetry has a circle? Now that is yours to answer in addition with the named 
plain figures you have got. Now looking at the misconceptions, we have a number of misconceptions that go with the teaching of Pythagoras theorem. The first one we want to look at The first one we want to look at is the case where we have difficulty naming the sides of a, tri a right angle triangle. So, so naming sides. of a right triangle. Now a right angle triangle can also be called a right triangle. And so when we have a right angle triangle, the key thing is that it has an angle of 90 degrees. And so for that right angle triangle, if we name the sides A, B, and C, can we name the sides of the triangle? The issue is that we have named them with these letters, A, B, and C. Now the key thing is we don't need to name them by technical names to identify the sides of the triangle. The only name we need to have is the hypotenuse side of that triangle. And the hypotenuse is basically the side of the triangle that is facing the 90 degree angle. The side of the triangle facing the 90 degree angle. And which side is facing the 90 degree angle with my sides labeled A, B, and C? I'm sure you got it right. The side facing the right angle triangle is the side C. And that will be a hypotenuse side. And that is enough for naming triangles for applying Pythagoras theorem. Now it is also possible to name all other sides of the triangle, but that will come in another lesson. And for Pythagoras theorem, our key name is with reference to the hypotenuse side of the triangle. Now, the second misconception is that Pythagoras' theorem is usually given as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that is a misconception because the sides labeled a, b, c can change with reference to a particular triangle in question. And so if I have my triangle, my right angle triangle this way, and it is labeled A, B, and C. Obviously, we cannot have the Pythagorean statement or equation as A squared plus B squared plus C squared. We can only have it with reference to this particular triangle. And with this triangle in mind, we first of all have to name the hypotenuse side, and then we can write our Pythagorean statement correctly to correspond with the triangle. And so here, what is our hypotenuse side? It is B. And so the statement of Pythagorean uh, equation would go as the hypotenuse side squared is equal to the other two sides squared, the sum of the other two sides squared. So that is the equation that will go with the diagram we have. And so take note that quoting a Pythagorean equation as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared is a misconception. We have to look at it based on a particular triangle that we are discussing. And so let us quickly take a look at another triangle. I have this right angle triangle with the sides x, y, and z. What then will be the Pythagorean equation for that triangle, x, y, z? 
we first of all have to identify the hypotenuse side and then we'll be able to write the equation in such a way that the longest side which is the hypotenuse side will be squared and that will be equal to the square of the sum of the other two sides or the legs of the right angle triangle and so we will have it as z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and so that is what our pythagorean expressions would be and remember the expression should be written in line with the specific triangle you are considering our next concern will be to identify ways of removing the misconceptions or remedying the misconceptions we have identified the first remedy will be to make sure that you know or identify your right angle triangle based on only one side that is the hypotenuse side all other names that we have been using will be uh, we will hold on to them until we get to another part of our lesson the second remedy will be to make use of a, a geo board a geo board is basically a board with nails drilled into it at equal intervals and so if we have a geo board we can create a right angle triangle on it as i have done now with this right angle triangle we will be able to create squares on each side of the right angle triangle so with my case i am creating a square on one side of the triangle and with that square i'll be able to find the area of that square i'll do the same thing i'll do the same thing on the hypotenuse side of that square and then another one on the last side of the right angle triangle when that is done effectively this is what will happen For our right angle triangle, let's call it ABC. We are creating a square on the side AB. We'll create another one on the side BC. And finally, another square. on the side AC. Now the assumption is that if the square is perfectly done, and remember a square has equal length all through and equal angles at every vertice. What it means is that the length here, if we call it A, and that one we call it B, and that is called C, then the length of the square here will be C, 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 across the length of this square will be b on one side and so it will be b on all other sides and on the hypotenuse side the square would have its length as a all across now with this you can help your students to see that if we cut the square and paste here and we cut this other one and paste alongside these two squares will fill the big square completely. And that is enough evidence for the, your learners to see that the square on the B side plus the square on the A side will give us the square, sorry, is the square on the, B, on the side B plus the square on the side C will be the same as the square on the side A. 
So that is one way of trying to help your students overcome the misconception they have, the second misconception for that matter. Another way would be to ask them to find the area on that, of that square, B. The area of the square, A. And then compare it to the area of the square, A. So the area on the side, B, will give us B times B, B times B. And that will give us our B squared. The area here, too, will be C squared. And the area here will be A squared. And so what Pythagorean equation says is that the two areas on the shorter sides of the right angle triangle are the same in size as the area on the longest side, which is the hypotenuse side of our right angle triangle. Now, I need all of you to be able to practice and adopt various um, concepts, various triangles to the correct Pythagorean statement that goes with it. And that would help in overcoming the challenges, especially the misconceptions we have when we are uh, working or teaching and learning Pythagoras theory.